Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about using Mach 3 to automate a workflow of your operation. Now, this is a question that comes in all the time. We know that Mach 3 and all the other motion control software out there are designed around automating production robots, where it comes from a mill, a plasma, a router, whatever it may be. And what many times clients come to me with, um, whether it be past clients, potential clients, is, hey, I have an idea I want to automate. How do I do it? And can Mach 3 actually handle it. And the question usually always comes back with a yes. But I'm going to draw you an example here. I have a client right now that wants to do a pick and place robot. We've got over here the tool display and then over here of course we've got some sample G code that I've written and of course I've got the definitions here which don't affect the code at all. Many of you may not know that but you can certainly do that. And what we've got here is we're going to move the x-axis two inches in the positive direction, pause for two seconds, which went right here, P.5 equals two seconds. And then over here, we're going to move the x-axis two inches in the negative direction, pause for the two seconds, and just continue this cycle. And he wants to run for eight hours. So the question comes in, how do we do this in a format with Mach 3 instead of using a PLC? Well, what we have to do is basically loop this code. Once we've identified the code required, we then loop it. So how do we do that without creating, you know, uh, an enormous amount of work for us to actually copy, paste, and go on and go so forth? Now, you've got a couple ways you can achieve doing a looping pattern. Um, the easiest way to do a looping pattern would be to come up over here to Editor. And again, I am using the Physics Anonymous screen set. And you're going to type in M47. And that M47 command is basically starting the G code from the first line. So as it starts from the first line, it's going to go all the way down, hit M47, and just create a continuous loop. We'll show you that right now. That's been saved. We can see we have everything there. And we're just going to hit cycle start. And again, we can see the chassis is in motion. And we're going to go all the way through to that M47, and you can see it hits the M47. It's going to go rebound right to the top. There we go. Just going to keep going for as long as we'd like to continue this. And this is a question I get all the time for doing more autonomous motion. So again, we'll come out of this now, and you guys can see me walk through doing it the other way and this is a little more in depth but again there are certain instances you may want to do this now what we're going to do is we have to figure out how long we need this code to be in terms of lines so that we can initiate that it will complete that eight hour cycle that he needs or anyone for that matter and you can naturally substitute eight hours for whatever time frame you like how do we do it well what we're going to do is we're going to run the code now and we're going to let it go through and we're going to look at the elapsed time here so we can see how long it takes this code to complete. So let's do that first. Go in two inches. I'm going to go back. Wait two seconds. You'll see the dwell. There it is. Okay, we've got an elapsed time, a rough estimate of 12 seconds. So let's do the math and we'll figure it out. So 480 equals eight hours. Because naturally we know 8 times 60 in seconds would give us 480 seconds, right? So what we want to do is divide this by 0.12 because that equals 12 seconds. 4,000 lines to do 8 hours, okay? So you would need 4,000 lines of this code to equal roughly 8 hours. Now, who is going to copy 4,000 lines? It just doesn't make sense, right? So how do we do this? Well, let's show you how you do this. It's very simple. We're going to come over here. Here is the code. I'm going to copy this. Now what I'm going to do is we'll get rid of this. And we're going to come over here to a site called editpad.org. And if you guys go to editpad.org, you can see you can copy your text right here. In this case, our text is our code, and then we can repeat it for as many times as we require. So in this time, we need 4,000 lines, and you can see we've got everything here. So we can add a separator if we'd like. I don't want to change anything. We're just going to hit repeat text, and there is your 4,000 lines, gentlemen. That fast, everything is generated, and you're all set. So we just come over here then to click the copy. We're copied, and then we're going to come over here once again, and we're going to bring up our tab, go right there, 
And you can see everything is here because you can see how long this text is. Huge. File. Save. We're going to save it as test. Save. Yes, we want to replace it. And guess what? We're going to load it. There's your text. And let's test it. And you'll see it's just that simple. So now we can see we're moving. We will continue to move in a pick and place format. Once again, just operating this axis. If he was doing multitudes of axis, you could do the same thing. Just initiate the code and go with it. And now you have a way to use Mach 3 in a non-conventional workflow. For instance, like using a conveyor belt where PLCs were only used. Now you can see you can use Mach 3 in a format that it's not really designed for, but it's really interesting how you can get so many different ideas. And that's what happens with many of my clients. They get more and more ideas. And you know anything they can do to automate and streamline their process, if they have an extra axis, this is a way to do it. Again, you can see our dwell taking over, and this just keeps going. So if you wanted to control, for instance, one axis repetitively, you could definitely do that. So again, I hope that this has answered many of your questions. I hope that the people out there that are the most creative get the most out of this because believe you me, with automation, we can automate anything if it fits your budget. If you want to do something that is non-conventional, we can definitely do it. Um, the big thing is, does your budget allow it? And you know, how much of the learning curve do we have to shorten to get you there? That's the real question. So again, I hope that this video has helped you all. I'll put links in the description below for the link to edit pad and you guys will be set. Thank you for your support. Take care.